Okay. Okay, now, is it recording now? Or streaming? Okay, good. Okay, it's working. Okay. So. Yeah, okay, so. Okay. Here, Dad, you do that and I'll talk to Pablo. Alright. Just go in there and then point you the right direction. Um, you don't need the stool, do you, Father? upside down here to me. Uh, is it right? What you got to do is... Okay, turn the camera around. Mm -hmm. Turn the camera around. Okay. Okay. And then... No. The button doesn't work. Okay, now it did it. Okay, because you've got to have the camera that way. And then that's probably the correct way, right? Is that the correct way? I'll find out. Is it still too high? Wait a minute. Oh, it's looking at me now. Right, and you've got to turn it around and make it the other way. Otherwise, we've got to make it the... Uh, which way is the correct way? Is that the right way? Oh, hang on. If he said that sideways. Quit moving it. That's that. So Wait a minute, hold on. Is that upside down? Now what? What do you say? I can't hear him. Hang on a second. I have to find the right way. Okay, is it right now? Okay, it's sideways. Okay, that should be the correct way then. Okay, is it the right way now? Okay, that's got to be the correct oh. way. Thank you. 
Darling, I'm sure this can be Sarah Wayne and Adam Enter. 
Vi har nu kvar diktus för Samuel och Jose Mori Tejso. Ett fagare är Stelus Kastina, Kungwe, Venicent, Populus, Adioakim, Veromeus. Veneron det duo senores pleni iniqua cogitazione adversus Susanum, urutre ficerent eam. Et exeron quorum populo mitite ad Susanum filiam elgiae uxorum Joachim. Estate viserot. Et bene cum parandibus et filiis universis doniatis suis. Levan digitur sui et omnes qui noverant noverant eam. Consolidentes autem duo senores in medio populi, Oculum manus sua super capo deus, quae flens suspexit ad celum et et erat enem coreus fiduciam abens in nomine. Et excellent seniores, cum deamul eremus ser in homore pomario soli ingressa est et cum duamus puelis, et clausit ostia pomarii et divisit in asse puelas. Venique ad eam et adulations qui erat absconditus et concubuit et cum eam. Poronos, cum esemus in angulo pomarii videntes iniquitatem cucuribus ad eos, et vidimus eos pariter comisceri. Et illum, quidem non conquivimus comprendere, quia portior nobis erat in apertis hostis exilibi. Aviaro, pomarii ad esemus, interrogavimus, quisquam quisnam esse adulation, et noluit indicare nobis, uius rei testes sumus, credit eis multitudo quasi senibus et iudicibus populi, et condemna verum de eam ad mortem, et somabit autem vote mania Susanna et dixi, Deus eterne, qui absconditorum es cognitor, qui nosi omnia antequam fiant, tu eis quoniam falsum testimonium tutarum contra me, et ece morior, cum nigel orum fecerim, Quae isti maritiosi compulsuerunt adverso me. Nexa dictatem dominus voce meus. Cum quae duceretur ad mortem, suscitabe dominus spiritum sanctum puere junioris, cuius domen tania. Et exclamabe voce magna, mundus ego sum a sanguine cuius. Et conversus omnis populos ad eum dixit, quis est iste sermo, quem tu locutus est. Qui cum staret in medio eorum aet, Sic facti fili Israel non unicantes, neque quod verum est cognoscentes. Condemnastis filiam Israel, revertimini ad judicium, qui a falsum testimonium locutis non adversus eam. Reversus es ergo populus confessionatione. Et dixit ad eos Daniel, separate iodos ad edi abem vicem procur, et di judicavo eos. Cum ergo divis iesent alter ab altero, vocavit unum Dei eis, et dixit ad eum, et veturate dierum malorum nunc venerum peccata tua que oferiam operabaris, pabaris prius, judicans justitia injusta, innocentes oprimens, et dimitens noxios, dicente domino innocentem et justum non in beficiens. Nunc ergo si vidisti eam sub dic sub qua arvore videris eos coloquentes sibi, qui ait sub cino. Dixidatem Daniel, recte mentibus es in caput tuum, ece in amangelus Dei accepta sententia ab eo scindet te medium. Era moto eo iusit veniri alium et dixidei, semen canaan, et non juda, species decepit te, et concupiscencia subverti cor tuum. Sic facie batis filiamus Israel, et ille timentes loque vantur vopis. Sed filia iuda, non sustituit in imitatem vestram. Nunc ergo dic mici, sub qua arbore comprehenderis e incoquente sibi, qui ae sub prino. Dixeratem ei Daniel, recte menditus es et tu in caput tuum. Manet eilem angelus domini gladium abens, ut sedem secet te medium et interficiamos. Exclamave itaque omnis cetus voce mania, et benedicerum deum qui salvet sperantes in se. Et consurrexerum adversus duo seniores, convigere in emeos Daniel exore salvot falsum dixise testimonium. Vecerum quae ei sigur malie gerum adversus proximum, 
retributeron ellos el tomatus del sangre sin oxios en día y hora. Si ambos han pedido un hombre mortis, no me he comado. Ponían tu me como es nomine. Verga tu epaco los tuos, si se me consolaste juntos. Magister eg mulier modo de prehensa ens in adulterio. In legi autem moises mandavit nobis uius modi lapidari. Tu ergo quede dictitis, hoc autem dicebant in tantes eam eum, ut posent accusari eum. Jesus autem inclinans se deorsum, digito scribeva in terra. Cum ergo perseverant interrogantes eum, Rexit se et exideis. Qui sine peccato est vestrum primus in ilam lapidam vita. Et idrum se inclinans scribevat in terra. Aurientes autem unus postunum exiemant, incipientes a senioribus, de remansit solos Iesus. Mulier in medio stans. Et idens autem se Iesus dixidei, mulier ubis sunt, qui te accusavam, nemo te condemnavit. Quae dixit nemo domine, dixit autem Iesus, nec ego te condemnavo, vadi et iam amplius noli peccari. So today is Susanna Saturday. So we have the long epistle today taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 13. And uh, always, during my childhood, this was always my uh, favorite day of reading the, the epistle and the gospel was today, reading the story of Susanna and uh, this story of uh, the, the, the Daniel, chapter 13. One of the great miracles of the Old Testament. And it's interesting to note about Daniel chapter 13 is that in the, in the book of, the, uh, of um, uh, the Protestants, the Protestant Bible, they have what they call the, the, the deuterocanonical books that they reject. They accept the book of Daniel, but they do not accept chapter 13 and chapter 14. Chapter 13 is the story of Susanna. And chapter 14, Daniel the lion's den. And the reason why they rejected chapter 14 is because it comes after chapter 13. They couldn't well take out 13 without taking out 14, but 13 was very offensive to them. And you'll see also the Protestants, when they brought back the Bible, when the book of Tobias was thrown out, but when it was put back in, they changed chapter 6. And chapter 6 of the book of Tobias talks about the importance of purity, how Tobias had to be pure when he was with his, even when he was with his wife that he had to be offered the first three nights to God, and then only afterwards would they be joined in their wedlock. And the Protestants are very impure in their foundation. Remember, Martin Luther had two wives, Henry VIII had six. And so impurity was very much the foundation of the heresy of Protestantism. They claim all kinds of false reasons for Protestantism. They believe in the Bible only and faith alone. Why do they believe in faith alone? Why do they believe in faith without works? Is it because that the average Protestant is strongly tempted to commit murder? Or strongly tempted to steal? No, it's because of impurity. The justification of impurity and the sins connected with impurity. Now, they don't want to go to confession for the sins against the flesh. And also, they want to be able to divorce. And they want to be able to birth control their children. They were the ones that invented birth control. It was, didn't exist in a society before Protestantism. 
And so Daniel chapter 13 was offensive to them because of Susanna. And they tried to come up with some uh, particular reason why 13 and 14 were not good, whereas the first 12 chapters were. But they rejected this chapter 13. It is a day in which Daniel became noticed. The first day of the prophecy of Daniel. He would have been 12 years old and a boy and unknown. He was just one of the many boys uh, of, of Israel. There was no, no, nothing special about his family or about his authority. And on this particular day, we read about Susanna. And Susanna, her husband Joachim was away, and Susanna was very beautiful. And she was also very loved by her family, very loved by her husband, and, and she was filled with great virtue. But she was extremely beautiful. And two old judges, two judges were deceived by her beauty, and they wanted to sin with her, to commit adultery with her. And so they conspired. They went into the large, Joachim was very rich, and he had a very large house filled with a big wall, and there was a pond in one part of the, one part of the house, separated from the other. And there she would take her bath. So she went to the, to the little pond, and she told her servant girls, go and leave me alone, for now I will take my bath. And so they left her alone. Meanwhile, the two, the two evil judges were hiding behind a tree. And when the servants had gone, they came to her. And they said, Behold, we are the judges of the people. We are the judges of the people. And you must sing with us. You must commit adultery with us. And if you do not commit adultery with us, then we will say that a young man came, and a young man committed adultery with you, and we saw the young man. And we came to beat up the young man, but he ran away. And we will say that you have committed adultery, and you know the punishment for adultery is to be stoned to death. And we have also the gospel today about the woman taken in adultery that was going to be stoned to death in the time of our Lord. 600 years after Susanna, the law was still in place. And so she was going to be stoned to death. and said, therefore, you cannot do this, you must sin with us. And Susanna said these words, If I do this thing with you, it is death to me. But if I do it not, I shall not escape your hands. Now notice what she said. If I do this thing, it is death to me. She did not say, if I don't do this thing, it is death to me. Because she knew that if she did not sin with these judges, she would be put to death. But what did she consider death? This is one of the passages of the sacred scripture where we, where we know that our Lord refers to two different kinds of death. One is the death of the soul, and the other is the death of the body. And when Susanna said, if I do this thing, it is death to me, she would, not, she would rather stay alive with God and fall into the hands of the enemies. And this is the faith of Susanna. It was not imaginable to her. It was not conceivable to her. It was not possible for her to offend God. Now, if Susanna had not lived a perfect life up to this moment, if she had not been a perfect wife and a perfect mother, if she had not been perfect in her virtue inside of the house of Joachim, she would not have been able to have the strength to say these words, and she, would not have, she did not know these men. She had no time to think. She was affrighted, she was shocked, she was, the, the two old men came to her, she knew them immediately, because they were the judges of the people. All the people knew the judges. These were the two wicked judges, and they also knew they were wicked. And she also knew that they would make good in their promise. And she knew that if she sinned with them, she would live in the body. And if she did not, she would be killed. But her thought was, if I do this thing, it is death to me. If I do it not, I shall not escape your hands. Yes, she will go into the hands, but God will determine whether she will die or not. She did not wait. She did not debate. She did not think. She did not weigh the options. She didn't consider whether she could be forgiven. It, will, it took about 30 seconds between the time that she saw those men and they made the wicked proposal. That's the first 25 seconds. Then she said, if I do this thing, it is death to me. If I do it not, I do not escape your hands. And she did not wait. 
She did not let the temptation or the fear be in her. And she cried out with a loud voice. She screamed at the top of her lungs. Knowing that this would bring her servants in all the house. And then one of the men went to the, went to the gate. And he opened the gate. And he came back. And all the servants came around. And they saw the two old judges. And they saw Susanna. And they said, what happened? And one of the old judges said, we saw her when the servants had left. That she was with a man committing the sin of adultery. And we went to grab the man. But we are old. And he was young and strong. And he defeated us. And he ran out and opened the gate and escaped. But we are the witnesses to these things. And then they brought her to trial. And as she was on her way to trial, she had confidence in God. And she went on her way to the trial. And she said, Lord, thou knowest that I have not done any wicked thing. Lord, please hear my cry, that I may not die by the hands of these wicked men. And a few words of Daniel. And the Lord heard her prayer. The Lord was up in heaven, and the Lord heard her prayer. And he raised up a boy, Daniel. And notice the timing. There was a trial. It was very brief, because the judges were the witnesses. The judges were the liars. The judges were the, were the, were the ones who made the decision. They were the jury, they were the judges, they were the witnesses. Very much like in our present crisis of the Society of St. Pius X, Bishop Pillay is the judge, he is the jury, and he is the witness. As I mentioned in my own canonical warning, you're going to be expelled. I would respond, well, I need to, where is the judge? Where is the court? In this case, the judge is the same as the witness. And the judge and the witness and the jury are the same. And the prosecuting attorney is the same. And he is going to allow me to have a defense attorney, which is going to be also the same. So what are the chances of a just trial? And the 37 priests wrote these same words just on February the 28th. 37 priests of France to Bishop Filet. They said, how can there be a just trial when the judge and the jury are the same? And when the judge and the jury and the witnesses are the same? And the prosecution is the same? How can we have a just trial? And so that is why we've kept our names anonymous. Not only three of them, their names are found out so far, and they're already removed, refused ministry, and there's presently a witch hunt going on throughout France to find the names of all the 37. They're not going to find the heresies that are written in dc.org. They're not going to find the heresies written in sspx.org, which are published for the public. They're not going to ask any explanation of the, or the, the erroneous statements of our superior general. But they're going to hunt for those 37 priests. The judge and the jury and the prosecutor are the same. This isn't the first time this happened in history. These judges were the witnesses. And they judged her. And the people were shocked. But notice this. They wept. For the friends of Susanna wept. And Joachim came back and he wept. Why did they weep? They were not shocked. They wept. Why did they weep? Because they knew that Susanna was innocent. And they knew that those judges were wicked. But they also knew that because they were the judges, and because they were the witnesses, there was no way to save them. There was nothing that could be done. And so all these servants who knew she was innocent, and the husband who also knew she was innocent, and all the other friends that knew she was innocent, they said nothing. The trial was complete, and Susanna was going to be executed. And it says in the book of Daniel, and then when the trial was complete, and she was on the way to execution, God raised up the boy Daniel. Consider the power of this boy. He's about 12 years old. He's a little boy. He is not known. He stands up on a rock above all the Jewish people and he says, I am innocent of the blood of this woman, for you are taking an innocent woman to death. And they stopped. It tells us this massive crowd, it would have been thousands, they were on the way to take Susanna to be stoned to death. And as they were on the way to kill her, they were stopped by the voice of Daniel. And they said, what are you saying? And Daniel did not have any confusion. Daniel did not weigh both sides. Daniel did not say, well, let's give a fair trial here. Daniel knew these men are wicked. 
These men are guilty. These men are straight from hell. And they are the judges of the people. And he's not the only one that knows that. Daniel wasn't the only one that knew that. They all knew it. But Daniel alone stood up on the rock at the age of 12, a little boy. And he said, these wicked judges, they tried to pervert a woman of Israel, and they perverted many. But the daughter of Judah would not mix in their sins. Are you going to let a daughter of Israel innocently go to blood? Let them be judged again. Behold, I will judge them. Now imagine the average 12-year-old boy stands on top of a rock. And the people are taking someone to death. And the judges are taking them. And the soldiers are taking them. And that boy says, this one is innocent. And I will judge them. The boy would be beaten. The people would say, you're crazy. Take that boy home and beat him. He's a little brat. But Daniel spoke with such power at the age of 12. He had the power of God was with him. And he spoke. And the whole people stopped. And he said, let's go back and I will judge them. And they recognized the power of God and the wisdom of the prophet inside of Daniel. And they said, yes, Daniel, you be their judge. Now let us judge them now. And festinantes, it says, they ran quickly with haste back to the trial. How long did the trial take? Two minutes. There was no need to go through all kinds of details. Because when God wants to save someone, He can do it quickly. He doesn't need to go through all the red tape. He doesn't need to go through all the steps and all the principles of our modern world. He doesn't need to go through everything that the world requires. You've got to fill out this paperwork. You've got to fill out that paperwork. You've got to file a request form. You've got to put a stay on the execution. You've got to, you've got to ask for the judge to give a stay. That you've got to go to the king and get a, 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 get a delay. Then next week we'll have another trial. We'll have a retrial. Then we'll have another trial. None of that garbage. The boy Daniel is going to judge them now. Because justice must be done now. Because God is going to save Susanna now. And those evil, evil judges who right now, 2,600 years later, are burning in hell, are going to receive their judgment now. When God decides, he acts. Daniel said, separate these two wicked men. He never said nice words. Take these two wicked men and separate them. Put them far from each other and I will judge them. And he asked only one question. Behind which tree did you see this woman commit the sin? And Hebrew scholars tell us in Hebrew the words rhyme. The words match. And in English and Latin they don't. And it explains Daniel's response. And the first one man said, we stood behind, in Hebrew, what is called the cutting tree. He said, well, have you spoken? For this day you will be cut in half. You are one who have, uh, who have always oppressed the innocent. And you have made unjust judgments. And you have sent innocent men to hell. But today, a daughter of Judah would not fall for your wickedness. Now go. No more questions. Next one comes in. And he tells them the sins beforehand. The second judge, he says, you wicked judge. You have committed the same sin you tried to commit with Susanna. You committed it with many other women, many other daughters of Israel. And they were afraid, and they would sin with you. But they sinned because of fear. But then you came to a daughter of Judah. And you found the daughter of Judah is not the same as the daughters of Israel. And she would not sing with you. What kind of a tree did you stand behind? And he said, the slicing tree. Well, have you spoken the slicing tree? Because you will be sliced in half, and you will be cut in pieces this very day. And the people heard the two kinds of trees. And by their own mouth they were condemned. And by their own mouth... With only one quick question, they were condemned by their own mouth. And the people took them, and they brought them, and they put them to death. And they burned in hell then, 600 years before Christ. And they burn in hell now, and they will burn in hell for all eternity. They had everything lined up, like many wicked judges. 
The wicked judges have everything in control. The wicked judges have the court on their side. The wicked judges have the police on their side. The wicked judges have the army on their side. The wicked judges have the witnesses on their side. They have everything on their side. And the wicked judges are going to do wickedness, and they will not be stopped. But one day, when the wicked judges least expect it, things won't go well for them. And justice will be done by God. He raised up a little boy, Daniel. And it explains also why, when Nebuchadnezzar came to Israel and destroyed the temple, Nebuchadnezzar was going to destroy the temple, the same one that God said was the greatest of all the kings. He was the king that destroyed the temple. He destroyed the temple, the old temple. Because God wanted to have a new temple in which he would walk 600 years later. And he destroyed the temple. And he also, Nebuchadnezzar wanted to find any interesting boys and any interesting characteristics. And he would take all the interesting things and bring them back to Babylon. And they took Daniel. Why did they take Daniel? They took Daniel because the word spread throughout when the Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians came, are there any special gifted boys here? Well, there's one boy here who is only 12 years old. And he saved just innocent blood in a day. By himself, he stood on a rock. He stopped all the people from killing this woman, Susanna, who was innocent. He said, let me see that boy. And the boy was brought before the king. And he was brought to live in the king's house, Nebuchadnezzar's house. And because they would not want the boy to be alone, they brought other Jewish boys with him. Three of which would be the three young men in the fiery furnace. Daniel would spend the next 70 years in Babylon. And he would be the advisor of the great kings of Babylon. And he would be the protector of the Jewish people. But how did he begin? He did not know what was going to happen when he was 12 years old and stood on that rock. He did not know that it would be the beginning of the journey of a prophet. He didn't know that. But Daniel stood on top of that rock and he said, I am innocent of the blood of this woman and she will not be put to death. The power of God came over him and he had confidence. Imagine if he was not successful in his trial. What would have happened? He would have been put to death with Susanna. He knew that. He wasn't foolish. But he had confidence in God. And he stood on the rock. And he condemned the judges. And in two minutes, they were found guilty. And in two minutes, the justice was, innocent blood was saved. And it said, and the people rejoiced greatly because innocent blood was saved in that day. It was a day in which God allowed this story to pass down to us, this true story of Susanna. It happened about 590 years before Christ. This story passes down to us, Susanna, that we might understand that regardless of the lies of the world, and regardless of the attacks of the devil, God can save us at any time that he wishes from anything. Our Lord himself said, Amen, amen, I say unto you, they shall not touch a hair of your head. This is the same Christ that said, Can you be baptized with the baptism of which I am baptized? How am I straightened until it be accomplished? In other words, can you apostles be baptized with blood? Can you be baptized with the baptism of blood that I'm going to receive on the cross? And how am I straightened until it be accomplished? I want to go to this baptism. I wish to be baptized in blood. Will you be baptized in blood? And two of the apostles said to him, We want to sit in your right hand, your left hand. Can you take it? You don't. Well, you will go. You will receive, uh, I forget the exact words, but the Lord says, you will receive the baptism of blood. You will all die martyrs. But who is on the right hand and the left hand? This is determined by the Heavenly Father. So James and John, yes, you will die as I have died, a martyr. And so the same James and John that would die a martyr, when it was not their time, St. John was put into the boiling oil, boiling oil, and he was not harmed. When it was not their time, when it was not the time of the apostles, when it wasn't their time to die, they were not harmed. And when it was their time, they went to death. 
St. Peter escaped from the prison because it wasn't time for him to die in Acts chapter 5. And St. Peter, the same St. Peter, went to be crucified upside down after 30 years later. But he was, he stayed, he was not touched, he was not harmed. The guards, did, the, the guards fell asleep. God determines the moment, not the enemy. Not the enemy. One of the great lines of the great southern general, General Jackson. He asked General Jackson, why are you so brave in battle? Why is it that in the great battle you're standing on the hill looking at the enemy, sitting on your horse? The enemies are firing and all those troops were, were, were scattered. And he said, rally the soldiers, rally the Confederates. Where are they rally? He says, go up there and stand next to General Jackson who is standing there like a stone wall. And so they all rallied around him and they won the battle. And they asked him in battle, why are you so calm in battle? And he said, God has determined the moment of my death not the enemy. Can I not die in my sleep? Can I not die of some disease? Can I not die of an accident? Are you scared every night when you go to bed because you might die in your sleep? Then why are you scared in battle? If it is not the time that God wants you to die, you will not die. The bullets will not hit you. Like General MacArthur, when he first met Patton in World War I, they were not generals at the time, they stood in the middle of the battlefield, looking at each other. And the German bombs were falling. And the German bombs were falling. The machine guns were shooting. And they refused to get under cover. And they stared at each other. And they said, what are you doing? He says, the Germans don't make a bullet good enough for me. <laughs> they can't kill me. God determines the moment of death. Not the enemy. Whether it be the enemies on earth or the enemies in hell. Therefore, Susanna cried to God when she had no hope, and God saved her. And this was done in order to show all men of all history that God determines, and God saves as He wishes. And when the time of martyrdom comes, when the time of death comes, we go gloriously to that death. But when it is not that time, He will save us. And we must have confidence, absolute confidence in God. He determines all things, and not the enemy. Those that God bless you all. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dami no servisco. Was my of the Jewish is upon the Melopian throne, but non dominator, and the eight family is finished to see a dominator.
Domine, a secola, a secola. Amen. Domine, a secola, a secola. Thank you. 